Hi, my name is uh, Walter Scott, uh, and I'd like to say a few quick words about International Stammering Awareness Day uh, 2020, which is on the 22nd of October. And I'd like to uh, mention in particular uh, the uh, campaign just launched by the British Stammering Association Trading as Stammer, which is called Find the Right Words. And it is about exploring the language that is used to describe and relate to stammering. And I'd like to pay tribute to uh, Jane Powell and the uh, artist and uh, musician and poet Scroobius Pip and others, everyone involved in that um, campaign. Because for me, the language that is used in relation to stammering is absolutely critical when it comes to setting uh, and influencing the attitudes that are out there towards stammering and people who um, stammer. What Jane and the team have done, among other things, is to look at some of the Wikipedia entries about famous people and celebrities who have stammered. And they have found enormous overuse of the word overcome, conquer, beat, cure, in relation to these uh, celebrity people who have seemingly managed to become fluent, as if to say through their force of character and their persistence and their strength and their practice and their determination, they have managed to somehow break out of uh, the strictures of disfluency to find fluency. And what does that say? To me, it says that fluency is good. And the flip side is that not being fluent or being disfluent or stammering is bad. And that is what the campaign is seeking to get to the root of and to change. And I just like to think a little bit further about how that good bad concept plays out um, in real life. First of all, in uh, education, um, there is a, a movement at the moment called uh, Oracy, which is the proactive teaching of public speaking and conversation in the classroom. And it was noticed some time ago that in the teaching framework for Oracy, the word fluency appeared as one of the standards for uh, teaching it. Um, and I would like to pay a tribute to uh, Emma Hardy MP, a, a rising star in the Labour Parliamentary Party um, and, uh, and chair of uh, the All Party Parliamentary Group for Oracy and to a number of uh, leading Oracy organisations because they have recently removed the word fluency from that teaching framework and that to me is a really good move because I don't believe that good communication, effective speaking, good conversational skills require fluency. I think good communication is based on an awful lot more and that you can be an effective communicator and conversationalist and to be disfluent at the same time. So thank you, uh, Emma and others, for um, enabling that move to happen. The second way in which I would like to think about good and bad is really the next sort of step on from education, which is employment and in particular recruitment. And when you think about recruitment, the basic uh, tool or mechanism that is used for recruiting people into a job is uh, an oral interview. That's the main way in which job applicants are um, assessed for their ability to do the job, alongside obviously having to send in uh, their CV. Um, but think about the uh, typical job advert that you have poured over when deliberating over whether it's the right job for you and whether you want to go through the enormous effort of applying and competing for it. And you will recognise the words excellent oral communication skills, excellent interpersonal skills. What 
does that expression actually mean? When the recruiter is writing the job advert and they put those words in, what are they actually thinking of? What do, how they, do they expect candidates to display excellent oral communication skills? And if you take it back to the use of that word, fluency, in the oracy framework, what do you think it is likely to mean? And when you think about the uh, recruiting panel that you sit down in front of as a candidate for a job, two or three or four people who will have been successful in their careers and climbed up the corporate uh, ladder to get to where they are, speaking, how they speak, their ability to present has probably been absolutely critical to having got to that position. What do they recognise? What do they think when they are confronted with a candidate who stammers? How do they recognise good communication skills in that situation? And I hope and I would urge anyone recruiting, whether it's in media, whether it's in law, uh, whether it's in um, uh, the civil service, whatever area of employment, to really think very, very hard indeed about what for you constitutes good or bad communication skills. And so I would like to say thank you to Jane and the team at the British Stammering Association for bringing this issue and this question to life. And I hope that International Stammering Awareness Day this year goes with a bang and that we get some really good debates about good and bad in communication and about fluency and disfluency in education and employment and in so many other walks of life. Thank you and enjoy ISAD 2020.